firm belief. Well, and, the, and the thing was, though, I mean, if you even think about it, bro, on SummerSlam, you would have thought Evan Bourne would have had a spot on Team, you know, WWE, and they didn't even give him a spot, not even, you know, mention on the pay-per-view. Yeah, that's interesting, and, and we said that, um, oh, God, who were we talking about earlier? The guy that had backers in the company. Um, uh, oh, shit, uh, Brian. Uh, Dana Bryan, yeah, who uh, who has backers, you know, with, within that company. Uh, Shawn Michaels, John Cena are, are solidly behind him. John Cena was also uh, very much behind Evan Bourne. And I actually went to management uh, a few months ago and basically said, you're, you're dropping the ball with this guy. And uh, they brought him back. And, you know, it, it seems like it's a case of, remember Kofi Kingston when they had the angle with Randy Orton? They did the thing backstage with the paint on the car, and it looked like they were going to push him. And then... It was stopped dead in the tracks. It seems like Evan Bourne. Evan Bourne is going to be like one of those guys. You know he doesn't have that main event look. He doesn't have, you know what I mean? So it's hard to take him as a credible, you know, a credible main eventer or a credible world champ, future world champion. You know what I mean? And I think he's always going to be on the edge of just, he's, he's almost going to be there, but he's not going to be there. And it's, it's you know, I think WWE recognizes that. Exactly. And, and I mean, who can really see Evan Bourne beating, um, you know, some of the main eventers like, uh, you know, Randy Orton and stuff? I, I just can't you know, see it. Well, you know, they can build him up like a, like a Rey Mysterio, you know what I mean? And, you know, Rey Mysterio was world champion for, for some time, so. You know, and the other thing, though, is, the other thing with that is I just think they got a couple more, more promising guys to push than Evan Bourne also. Right, right. Call you live on WZR Radio. What's your name? Where are you from? Yeah, from Chuck from Atlanta. I called uh, a while back, but I don't know what happened to you guys. Did you guys... Uh, drop off the air or something? Well, no, we've been back. Uh, we took a hiatus. Uh, God, it was probably about two years ago, but we've been well, back. No, no, I'm saying a, uh, a few minutes ago. Oh, a few minutes ago, yeah, we had. Yeah, uh, we, we, mistake. We, yeah we had some audio problems. I fucked up on the uh, on the phone lines. <laughs> my bad. Okay. We got you here right now. So what's cracking, my man? Oh, it's all good. Yeah, um, I just want to respond to what Eric Bischoff said that. You know, all you need is quote unquote established stars to draw ratings or, or whatever. Right. And that's simply not true. I mean, you need more than just uh, established stars. I mean, uh, look at the presentation of TNA Impact. I mean, you, I mean, if you, I mean, I mean, if you look at Hulk Hogan or Jeff Hardy in front of 900 people at the Impact Zone, and if you compare that to them uh, with an audience of 30, 20, 20,000 people or 30,000 people, it's I mean, it's totally different, and I really believe, you know, the presentation, it also draws viewers in, uh, and you, I mean, if the WWE right now, if their Raw show has no superstars, and with that presentation of 20, 30,000 onlookers, and, and just and just the name brand alone will probably draw like 3.0 ratings, uh, and after that, it's up to the superstars on the show, so um, I, I think it's impacted it. it if, they, if they're really serious about drawing rating, ratings and increasing their audience, they have to take the show on the road. And, of course, there, there's got to be more people there. Because, uh, I mean, I'll give you an example. Okay, uh, the Lakers, okay? I mean, you know that they play in a really, in a really good arena, 20,000 people. I mean, will they, I mean, what would happen if they play in front of, like, 900 people in a high school gym? It's not going to be the same thing. Well, so... The the big, the big thing with that, though, bro, is the fact that the guy that owns the Lakers is a billionaire, while Dixie Carter is nowhere close to that, you know. And to go, to go, to go to different arenas all around, the production cost is a lot of money, you know. And really, they're just, they're not that big of a company yet. I mean, and this, you got to remember, TNA is still very young, you know. I mean, eight, they're not even ten years old, so I mean, and they're not even drawing that great of a rating. So, I mean, they're just, they're just taking these little steps. I mean, WWE wasn't a massive force overnight, and I just I don't see I mean, TNA being exactly. able to do this for a couple of years. Well, I, I mean, if they, if they really want to grow their audience, because um, if you look at um, what WCW did, and the minute they started doing that to, to go into place, I mean, over the presentation of, of, um, the, of the flagship show, it's just the, Nitro, and, and that had, like, I mean, you resources out there. Well, I mean, I mean, it's a risk. It's a risk you have to take. I mean, well, uh, they can't, I mean, if, if 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 they take that risk, they're going to be out of business because they can't afford that risk. Well, I mean, I mean, I, I, I mean initially, you are going to lose money. Uh, I mean, I just, I mean, I, I, the one thing about Eric Bischoff, he's a TV genius. The man, I mean, what he did with, uh, I 
of money in Nitro. I mean, he he hid a lot of weaknesses in that show. Let me, he, he, yeah. Let, let me let me just say this with with TNA. See, the problem is is okay. TNA draws that 1.0, 1.1 rating on a weekly basis. Okay, and they go out and they do live events. The reason that WWE gets, you know, these 15,000, 20,000 people to arenas is because they draw huge TV ratings. TNA's thing here is, let's build up our product on TV, and then let's go and let's run some bigger arenas. TNA ran a test, um, you know, even earlier this year where they came here in Albany and they ran the Times Union Center, and they drew 1,200 people in a 20,000-seat arena. So, the idea here is to basically... Build your fan base up on Spike TV, and as ratings grow, then you go out and you run bigger venues, and you run, you run, you know, bigger markets, and and you, you know, as your ratings increase, it's you, it's just way too early to go out right now and and run these twenty thousand seater wings because they're just not a big enough company well, to do so. Yeah, yeah I mean. Not Oh, Ryan, I was just going to ask you, Ryan, if you see, I mean, do you really think that TNA has the financial ability to go out on the road every week? Well, a lot of people, I mean, let's look at WWE Monday Night Raw on a weekly basis, on a weekly basis, just to put on Monday Night Raw, it's $250,000 in production, just for the pyros, just to put it on national TV. The same thing in TNA, obviously, on a much smaller scale, but I mean, you're looking, you're looking at close to $100,000 they spend on a weekly basis, or not on a weekly basis. Basis, but for their TV tapings, I mean, $100,000 just to produce and put impact on TV. So I think their focus right now is basically on their TV, build up a fan base, and once your fan base is built up with national television, where people have, you know, a platform to see you on Spike TV as your ratings go up, as you build, then you take the steps to go out and run bigger venues. And, and they're still a very young company, too. You know? Right. Hey, buddy, I got to, uh, I'll tell you what, we'll, uh, we'll continue this next week. Give us a call next week. We've got to get out of here because uh, NXT is about to start on the Sci-Fi Network and the show's over right now. Give us a call next week because this is a good discussion, um, yeah. and it'll, cre it, it'll create a good debate. Um, actually, not next week because I'll be live at SmackDown, but the following week after that, call us up and, and we bring this up and, and we'll debate this, okay? All right, okay. Um... Sounds good. All right. All right. I'll talk. Right, thanks, buddy. All right. Thanks for the call, my man. Guys, we got to go. It is 10 o'clock Eastern time. Chris, I, I know we wanted to talk about Bischoff and everything oh, else. Cool. Well, and I'm sorry, man. I didn't no, even... No, not a problem. Two hours. But uh, thanks oh, to all the guys. <laughs> yeah. We'll talk about it in two weeks. Well, two uh, weeks. I forgot. Yeah. Next week, we're going to be live at the SmackDown tapings. Um, we got to go. WZROnline.com. We are going to reinstall WordPress right now or tomorrow night. Um, we're going to have this up. The block will be off by the end of the week. We'll be all good. Uh, NXT on the Sci-Fi Network right now. We'll be live from SmackDown at the Times Union Center in Albany, New York next Tuesday night, so make sure you are here for that. have no idea how it's going to go, but we're going to do our best, um, and that'll do it. So, for Chris or what the fuck, Chris? For Chris or I said that's me. <laughs> no, you didn't. For yes, I did. Did I anybody else hear me? Come on, everybody. Uh, I don't think so. Fuck you, Acer, for fucking kicking at you, bitch. Hey. Uh, for Chris Holler. That's me, Dan. <laughs> Ryan Clark. That's him. So you see you next Tuesday night live from the SmackDown tapings. TU Center in Albany, New York. Peace.